Hi, I am Isabel, a coach for chopper women, which means I help chopper women work through their feelings of insecurity, guilt, shame, or even anger that surround our choice. Uh, I am the creator of The Uprising Spark, and I'm also the host of The Honest Upper Podcast. Hi, I'm Kristen Tatsy. I'm a writer, uh, pr primarily, I guess, uh, blogging on Medium, a uh, former journalist and fiction writer, I guess, is the main thing. I always try to incorporate the child-free perspective or child-free issues in some way in what I write, most recently in The Age of the Child, uh, which is a novel about a child-free woman living in a very recently post-Roe versus Wade America. Hi, my name is Lenora Faye. I'm a child-free lifestyle content creator, speaker, and moderator, most recently for the 2021 Virtual Child-Free Conference, which you can now watch on YouTube. I also host the uh, morning show, Child Morning Chat on Clubhouse, and I have a lifestyle brand called The Bitchy Bookkeeper. And we are the three founding non-mothers of Child Free Girls. And joining us today is our guest, Lily Rockalin. Hi, Lily. And she's going to be uh, joining us in our discussion, which the topic is, would you sacrifice your child-free life? So, hi, Lily. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I'm like, wait a sec, what am I doing here? <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> So you have a new song come out. Actually, I should say that you are a singer and songwriter based in New York, and you have an exciting new song out called Child Free, which is like, hallelujah. So tell us about that, the process, what inspired you, the reactions. Oh, <laughs> the reactions are interesting. Um, yeah, so yeah, well, I'm child free, obviously. Um, you know, I've been, you know, uh, since I was 15, I knew it. Um, so I wanted to write, uh, something about my lifestyle for a while. And so I actually wrote the lyrics last year and then I was like, okay, am I actually going in to make a song with it? Am I going to put this out? So it felt, I was a bit nervous about it, you know, it had never been done before. And then I was like, well, if I don't do it, who's going to do it? So it was basically that. And um, yeah, I did, you know, so, so throughout the year, you know, I was of course distracted with things, but I did the whole production. I'm, I'm also a music producer. And, um, and on the cover art, like we can see the cover art up there and right here. I um I have 55 child free happy child free women on the cover art and so yeah so the, you know um I'm really excited that it's out it's in the alternative style and uh the the reactions so you ask the reactions so the sun has been out uh, now for a week and um so I've had some neutral reactions I've had some women that were child free that I didn't know were child free because you know unless you say it you don't know if a woman wants children but she's just waiting for the right person or if she's childless you know there's something in her health or if she's actually child free so there's some interesting uh and really cool women that that came forward and said oh my god thank you for this song uh we needed this and 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 so on you know so that was just that made me really really happy because that's the reason why I put the sauna, you know, is to inspire uh, other women, you know, and have something to um, to support them, you know, mentally when we get criticized. And then I had um, I had some men making some really nice comments, and um, one of them said, "Oh, this was this is bold, this is awesome," um, and then somebody has said. Um, somebody was a little bit more like reserved. He said, Oh, nobody like wrote about this before. But then he was like, Oh, this is uh, your groundbreaking musician. I was like, Thank you. Uh, and then somebody else, somebody said that he had he had kids and that he would never do it again. So it was like, you know, your son makes sense. So I thought that was really funny for a guy to say that. And um and then I saw, I think yesterday on YouTube, there was, I mean, you know, on YouTube, you don't have, you know, anybody making comments and then I delete them. Somebody said, oh, um, you, you women, uh, you child for women are going to end up bitter old ladies and um, cat ladies. What is it? What did you say? I actually laughed when I read it because <laughs> I'm obviously not, you know, a bitter old lady. And um and then he was like, yeah, women do need babies. Uh, it's essential, you know, the whole thing. And then somebody else, and 
that one that had to actually handle it. Um, somebody has asked if the song was about abortion. And then he asked, may I ask if you had one? Wow. Yeah. So, you know, I took care of getting rid of that person. So, so you didn't name. reply to him? Well, Did, or yeah, it, it was an email. So oh, okay. I okay. replied. Uh, at first, I genuinely thought maybe he never heard the term, you know, the word child free, because, mm -hmm. you know, it's possible. So I said, Do you know, just go to that definition of the child free world, a uh, word, you know, and I said, have you read the lyrics? And then he continued and um, and he said, yes, I read the lyrics. And, you know, he made comments that were really inappropriate. He, and he like attacked me basically like if I had had an abortion. And he said, um, um, have you ever thought about what the baby would have become? Wow. So then, <laughs> I, yeah, I had. I have a coordinator that helps me with uh, emails like this. And so he Jeez. took care of that for me. That was nice. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it really sounds like that person. Okay. Uh, he may have read, but didn't compute the lyrics because there's, again, if it were about abortion, great. Does it, I mean, that that's not the point. It's just that the misunderstanding of the word and not taking the time to digest, like, what does that mean? You're singing about an experience for you being child free, not having kids. And it's interesting that that's, I wonder what happened with that guy that made him think abortion and then getting into that tirade when it has nothing to do with, you know, I think he had about. added a comment in there. He said, um, you said, I'm Catholic. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm not getting married to you. So who cares? <laughs> but, you know, so, um, yeah. So, yeah, I wanted to share that because so I'm, oh. I am I see also some things. There's some most of it is positive and the ladies on the cover art really love it and they're sharing it and they're it helps them also you know to show uh people hey look i'm on that cover art and the song is has so much of a punch you know in mm -hmm. the music that you know i think it's a great way for me to channel the message and it is very we were discussing the song when we heard it and we were like oh that's reminiscent of you know the kind of music that we used to hear back in the maybe early 2000s was like poppy is very upbeat is very happy it's a very happy song um so definitely thank you for that I mean this is the first time I've heard a song about that talks about our choice and it's it's part of the effort like the effort that we're all doing as a community to just bring more awareness to it and just normalize it basically so we don't get comments like the one that you got telling you you were going to grow old and bitter alone eaten by cats or whatever because that's what usually we get told right <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm happy that 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 you felt that. Um, I spent some time in deciding what what beat the song would have, how fast, slow instruments, uh, the vibe of it, and uh, I wanted it to sound happy, but it still has an alternative because the topic is an alternate. <laughs> yeah. You know, so um, yeah, thank you. Absolutely. So I wanted to ask you more about, you know, you mentioned that you decided that you've known that you wanted to be child since you were 15. So I just want to hear a little bit more about what it was for 15 year old Lily to realize that she didn't want to have children. Yeah, you know, um, so I had a lot of, I had, I had great girlfriends. We were a great group of girlfriends when we were teenagers. And we would talk about things openly and um, some wanted kids, some didn't, but we were very respectful of each other. And that, it was a very uh, special time to have these girlfriends. And, um, and so one time I, I told my best friend, I was 15 and I said, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not going to have children. She was like, really, are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm not going to have kids. I won't. I, I just know that, um, yeah, it's not for me. I really don't see it in my future. And I think it was an insight. Um, it was a very um, genuine, um, sincere insight. And uh, um, yeah, I think for teenage girls to 
try to listen to themselves like this and just you know block everything out it's hard sometimes but when you know when you're in the right environment like, you know like my friends and we were very open to talk about you know what we wanted to do our dreams and um yeah so uh the I think I'm, I'm gonna say that I was really lucky. I am really lucky that my close family, so I'm from France, so different, right, than America um, on this, I find, I noticed. Um, New York City is different, but um, the rest of the country is different. Um, yeah, I'm really lucky that my, my close family has never pushed me. And um, my sister's also child-free so far, you know. Um, and as as we were growing up, um, our parents never, and my mother never talked to us about, oh, when you're going to have a child. Maybe my mom said that once, but I gave her a look and then she never said it again. And she's very respectful. She always uh, wanted us, you know, to have a good education, get a job. That was her priority, the education, go to college and all that and do jobs that we like. But it was never the... Um, oh, you need to rush to get married and rush to have kids and because your hormones and your biological clock and blah, blah. I did not, I did not have this. And interestingly, when um, we were little girls with my sister, we did not have what I find, um, what I call the conditioning of being given baby dolls and having to take care with the, of the baby dolls. You know, those like ugly dolls, they... <laughs> They had I'm sure you guys remember that I'm sure they were here too like they were like crying and you had to like pay attention to, yeah um my mother never like pushed us or we never um I don't think we were ever offered actually as a gift a baby doll and now I'm really wondering if you let all the little girls in the world choose what they want to play with and not condition them from like when they two with a baby doll, what would happen really, you know? And um, we had, so, so I had Gem and the Holograms. That was my first singing inspiration. <laughs> Gem and the Holograms. Um, and then my sister liked a lot um, remote control cars, you know, like the little cars. We had that. We had some boys' games, some girls' games, and my my parents just let us, you know, pick whatever we liked, whenever we we felt like it. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, growing up in France, it was I didn't have a much um, pressure about this, like ever. And then here in the US, it was different. I want to know what was that look you gave your mother because there's many people who are like 30 and 40 still trying to get their parents to stop asking. Can you demonstrate that? Because maybe they can practice that and that will work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to remember this. Uh, I think I, so I was in my early 20s and she made the comment when we went in the bathroom. I remember that day because it was the first time I ever heard my mother say that. And, um, and I don't remember what she was talking about at all i just remember her saying well um if ever you have a child one day and she was talking away from me that like, was the mirror and uh, and i looked at her like and i think she saw me in the mirror and i was like i didn't just give her like you know the look like you know and uh <laughs> and then she, she and then she kind of like quiet down and um I don't remember what she was saying exactly. I don't know if it was like furniture, like a house stuff. I didn't say anything. I just gave her, the, and then she never ever said again. So yeah, well, it, it worked. <laughs> she's she's pretty cool. I, I mean, I mean, like I said, I'm pretty lucky. You know, like she never uh, pressure. She's pretty modern on this. I think that's great. I love that all you had to do was give her a look, and she respected your she respected your your decision, your boundary, your confidence and knowing what you wanted. And so many parents just don't, they don't really pay attention to their kids like that. They don't treat their kids as individuals with their own ideas. I, I just think that's awesome. Your mom sounds really cool. Yeah, she's very cool. But also, you know, I moved to the US when I was at 20, 20 you know, by myself from France. And um, even then she didn't say, you can't go, you can't leave me alone. Like she didn't say that, even though it was hard for her. Um, 
you know, she let, she let me live my dream and she trusted that I, I knew what I was doing, that I was smart enough to do it. And she wanted me to have a good job. Like that was her thing, you know? And um, so I think the boundaries there, you know, kind of happen naturally. The fact that I left, you know, I left my hometown, I left my country. That, that's a big <laughs> statement. <laughs> I've noticed I've noticed something about a certain generation in, in the people in France, and it's because the feminist wave of the 19 end of the 1960s was so strong in France. So many people grew up like many people who are more or less my age, maybe late 30s, mid 30s, more or less, or even even early 30s. They grew up with with mothers that are like super like feminist and like you said you know you don't have to play with with baby dolls and you do you and get a job and you don't have to rely on any men and that to me was because I lived in France for a while and I remember thinking this is such a different way um, you know to treat people to treat daughters basically and it was because of that we're burning our, our brass revolution thing that they did during that time that they sort of passed on the same values to their daughters. And I think that's awesome. Was that your case? Was your mom part of that revolution? So, you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, my, um, so my parents actually, they were born in French Morocco in the fifties. They have a very interesting background. And so they, they met in, uh, in the sixties. My father was a musician. So, you know, the, bands and the hippies and all that the rock music from the Beatles and um and then they moved in um in 1973 they were what we call rap repatriated to France and so um yeah so they had to adjust to a new country and all that and all that stuff my mother was working since she was uh 15 I've been a, a, a hippie um she she really believed that women should work and have a life and be independent and all that and she went she's a, a beauty uh cosmetic like artist and um so she went to school you know she went to beauty school at like 13 14 and then she started to work at 15 so that was for her really you know really big that women should work and you know have a career and all, all that all that stuff. Uh, burning bras, I don't think that she's she's usually kind of scared of like protests and all that stuff. So uh, I never asked her, but you know, that, that would be, um, I don't, I don't think, um, I don't think this is something that, that they did. And they were in French Morocco in the 60s. So I, I, I don't know, I don't think it happened there the same way. They heard about it and the music they were listening to, the music she was listening to was total hippie music. So um, yeah, she was in the movement for sure. My one question actually is just br more broadly as a musician, who your, um, who your influences are, because I listened to this song and then I listened to, I think it's called, I saw you. Is that, I listened to that one and, and in there I heard, and I'm not a, a music um, expert at all, but I was uh, a teenager in the eighties <laughs> And I, it seemed like I heard a little bit of The Cure and a little bit of Jewel, actually. And I just wondered who, who you like to listen to or who have been your influences. Oh, I listen to a lot of music. Um, uh, growing up, I actually listened to a lot of ABBA. And my wow. mother was a fan of ABBA. So I actually, and then they came back in the 90s. ABBA came back, like they had these like, greatest hits. And I listened to the music, listened to a lot of ABBA, the Beatles, and then, uh, you know, just 90s music, um, uh, no doubt, um, you know, Madonna, I listened to a lot of Madonna. Um, uh, I did listen to Joe, yes, I did listen to, I don't remember the name of the album, I did. And uh, and then also a lot of uh, music from the UK, a lot of like, well, was called the Britpop from the UK, like Oasis, Blur, you know, all that rock stuff. Um, yeah, and then these days I listen to a lot of Fro Florence and the Machine. Okay, yeah. She's really awesome. Okay, so um, we're going to play a snippet of my son, Child Free. I hope you all uh, like it. The lyrics are on my website, lilyrockling.com. 
youtube.com slash lyrics. So you can also see them on YouTube and on the video. And I hope that you enjoy it very much. Unfortunately, we can't listen to the whole thing, but I love that song. All of us loved it when we heard it. It's just super happy. And it, and that's um, kind of a really important thing since so many people have this impression of child-free people, as, as was mentioned earlier, as being cat ladies. Not that there's anything wrong with having cats. Nobody makes fun of men with dogs. I don't like anything being a woman is just wrong somehow. But yeah, we're none of those things. We're happy people, just like the song implies. You can buy it on iTunes. Um, and listen to the whole thing there. I, I personally see it in a, I listened to it and I heard it in a movie. It just seems like- Oh, thank um, you. Oh, you're Ending credits for a really powerful child-free themed movie. Like, yeah. Or even just like this really great scene, this good, I don't know, maybe a montage or just someone going out on their, a bunch of friends going out on their own. I don't know. It just, it's, it's really um, motivational. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to add the song is, um, is on all music platforms, everybody. You can find them on YouTube, Spotify, everywhere. So now we're going to uh, talk about our topic for today, our additional topic for today, which is would you sacrifice your child-free life? So we came across a, an, a thread on Reddit, child-free Reddit. And Isabel, do you want to? It was a post on Am I the A-hole? And it you're was- not going to say asshole. You say the F word all the time. <laughs> <laughs> was it on child free Reddit or was it just I'm a- trying to keep a PG for this oh. episode? We're, we're, we're keeping that part in here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so this is a story of um, a guy who got married and he had two children, a girl and a boy with his wife. And then after they had the second, just right after they had the second child, he came out as gay to her and she got really pissed off and he was shunned from, like she wanted a divorce. She kicked him out. Uh, He was shunned from her family. He was shunned from his own family as well from coming out as gay. He had to actually move across the country because nobody wanted to support him. And during the year, the following years, he tried to be like a good dad. He tried to like send money, like pay for child support. He tried to be very present for the child, for his children. But his mom, I mean, the kid's mom, so his ex-wife, she was full of hatred. And um, she was like, I don't decide, we don't, we, I don't want nothing from you. And you, I don't want to even like my kids, that I don't want them to know you because, you know, you're gay now and this is a betrayal or whatever. Um, a few, I don't know if years or months after, like she found somebody else. She she met another man. She got married, and she wanted this new husband to adopt her, their children. So they asked him to give up his parental how do you call it? Parental rights. Parental rights. Yeah. Yeah. So he, to surrender his parental rights so that these the other guy who married his ex wife could adopt the children who were still very very young. Um, in the meantime, he found somebody and he moved in with this guy. They started a life together. I'm not, I'm unsure if they got married or not, but they were like, a, you know, this couple, uh, official couple, and they had dogs and they decided together that they didn't want to have any children that, you know, they were going to be uh, live a childhood lifestyle, basically, even though he already had children, but he wasn't allowed to actually like see them. Um, a few months ago, uh, both his ex-wife and new husband passed away. So the children were left without parents and nobody in their families, like nobody in in his ex-wife family or even 
the new husband's family wanted to take the children in and they want him to actually take the kids because he's a dad. Well, he's their dad, biological father. Um, so this guy was saying, I might be asshole because I don't want to take them in. Like it doesn't, I don't want to, I don't, this is, I've, I've, I barely know these children. Like I, he left the eldest when she was three, the youngest one was just born. The eldest is now 10 and the other one is seven and they don't want to change their lives. Um, and they make him, you know, give up his parental rights. So are they the assholes for not wanting to, <laughs> to bring back the children who are his biological children, but never grew up with him because he wasn't let. So, and he actually signed away his rights Yes, already. Did. That's done. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. Okay. They were adopted by the, Oh, okay. By the guy who married his ex-wife afterwards. Yeah. So it's quite a, a sticky situation if you mind. So this so is I'm- why you have a will, especially when you have children young children and do legal guardianship before you pass away so then this doesn't happen sorry i'll get off my soapbox now but seriously that's what wills are for what do you think lily i don't i don't think they're assholes um (laughs) that was such a strong word and i don't know which part of america this is if it's in america um because you know if if he you know if he has no uh you know father like uh uh, how you say like saying you know to like take care of children you know why would he uh force himself if he does you know if he doesn't have it and he might not even do a good job and he's probably realistic about it so i think he's uh realistic and uh that's just not what he wants and um i i I don't think it's hard, right? But I don't, you know, if if he has a different lifestyle and a different uh, uh, choice and he's gay, right? This is something he can't change, right? And this is just how he feels. And if he cannot take care of children, he cannot take care of children, you know? And then if people are going to judge, that's their problem. What would I do? So if I was a gay man, <laughs> let me try. Well, no. um, let me try to. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I think it's just what I said. He should. Uh, this is very difficult. People are going to judge him, but um, if he cannot take care of them, they're little, right? The ages of really small children. Um, you know, some gay men will, like I have a gay friend that's married, you know, with a man and they, uh, they went through surrogacy and they have two twin little girls. They're very happy. You know, that's their thing, but it doesn't mean that other gay men, you know, will want the same thing, same, you know, just same thing as for women. So, um, I mean, if I was him, I would definitely keep doing what I think is best what I think is best for the kids and for me, but you know, you cannot um, force yourself to learn to do something, um, especially if he was very rejected by the whole family. It was a lot of drama, sounds like. Well, that's and just then- it. Sorry, because if, you know, just to, um, if, qu- quick question. If you were, you're a straight person, so not that has anything to do with it, but what would you do as you in that situation? um like if you if it was you if it was your kids and you gave up your parental rights as you as lily and then all of a sudden they came back to you and said there's nobody to look after these children can you take your children back after yeah. you have <laughs> you know i take would your not, kids back <laughs> i would not take them okay i would try to discuss with the family it would it sounds like it would be pretty awful um like a huge nightmare and i would make sure i did you know, constant support, everything, but I would not, uh, I would not be able to do that. I would not be able to take, uh, you know, children back, you know, uh, if I cannot take care of them, even, yeah, even if they would mind. Um, no, I think I would try to see them maybe like more, f- like more frequently since, you know, they lost a parent, right? Mm-hmm. I think I would probably come with some compassion there but that would be it you know it's like if it was my nephews or something you know but no i would i would not 
um, considering, you know, I have a life, you know, I built myself a life, you know, my passion, my careers, whether it's music, job, everything, lifestyle of New York City, I would not give give this up because I don't have um, the mother. I don't. I never felt something, you know, <laughs> you know, as being like, you know, what mothers feel. So, um, uh, so, so it is. Yeah, it is more complicated in this guy situation. Um, but I don't, I don't know how, the question is hard, Lenora, because I don't know how a woman um, that would have had children, well, yeah, no, they can just give up parental rights and just, mm-hmm. just go. Yeah. 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 It's just not talked about enough. It's just, it's, it's it happens. It's, yeah. It Exactly. Yeah. It happens. It's frowned upon. There's like this moral <laughs> outrage that comes after, you know, that, that, when when a mother decides that I can't look after my children, I don't want them or whatever the case is, there's just so much outrage, even quiet outrage and judgment, which sucks because a man can walk away and and there's there's not the amount of pushback that a woman gets. So it's it is very unfair. And OK, so basically score one or check check mark one for not an asshole. OK, I'm going to ask <laughs> uh, Isabel, what are your thoughts? Asshole or not asshole? <laughs> uh, definitely not an asshole. I mean, I just, they didn't let him be part of the, this children's life. They even like asked him to give up his parental rights. And I forgot to add in this story, uh, they consulted a lawyer and they, they legally, they can't obligate him to take in the children again. They because he signed away? Yeah, because, Is that he, signed, why? because okay. he, he was told that like, if your ex-wife or ex-husband comes along, he's like, here, sign this paper. I don't want you to ever see your children. I don't even want you to be their parent ever. That to me is a clear indication that they really don't want me in this kid's life, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, but he, they're, they're getting harassed, of course. They're getting like calls and things. And the thing, the one thing that is making them sort of like think about the situation is not only the rejection of the children, but also that people who are maybe in the position of taking them in don't have enough financial resources but they do understand that if they take him in they're going to be the ones putting in their own financial resources into raising these children um i don't think they're assholes i wouldn't do it either um in that specific situation um i would also like literally said i would also try to maybe visit them more often be a little bit more on top of things like what do you need I don't know mm-hmm. if I can like contribute in any way, but having them in my home and having to raise them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kristen? Well, I think I'm wondering, like if if the beyond contributing financially, um, why be there at all just because their parents are dead? Like if you're not going to be in their life, why be in there only part of the way? Why not just stay away entirely? Interesting. Well, so, and I guess I, I personally think that you know losing a parent or losing two parents because they they've also lost their their dad, you know, the one that they they were raised by. That's traumatizing enough, and also and and so following. Okay, so that being followed by being rejected by everyone in your family. Like I feel that these kids maybe need at least somebody in their lives who's going to be like, listen. I wish I could have done more. I wish I could have been there because I wanted to a long time ago. Now this is the way that I'm going to show up for, show up for you here and know that at least you have me, if you need me, like call me up or whatever, like, but I'm not going to bring you in with you to my home. You know what I mean? Like, I think children, at, especially at that age, um, they're a very, it, there's a, a risk of them, you know, being traumatized by this and just developing really self-harm, self-harmful, is that how you say it? Help or self self harm, mm-hmm. uh, sort of self harming, self harming yeah. habits, <laughs> self self harming habits, self harm habits. This is when you know that English is not my first language. Yes, it's it mine, is. and I don't know what it's called. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, I I also agree that they're not assholes because I'm I mean, it's especially, I guess it's on a technicality. He did sign his rights away already um and 
Oh gosh, there's, there's so many things. First of all, I, I just feel that, you know, to, to what Lily, Lily said, if he's now put in a position of almost forced parenthood because they don't really know him, he does not know them. He's doing it out of forced, ob if he were to choose, it would probably be out of forced obligation, not a genuine, I want to be your parent. Kids pick up on that. It will, it, I mean, from what I hear, parenting is hard, even if you want to be there and show up every day, let alone all of a sudden having to change your life, shift your life for something that you don't even really want to be there with. Like, how is that going to affect their children, the children? The other thing too is, you know, I, in theory, I like the idea of, because I, in theory, I would also be around in the kid's life, but how do you present that as, well, I'm your dad. I mean, and, and granted, there are lots of fathers who only show up in children's lives once every month or once every few years. So it's not uncommon, not uncommon, but trying to piece together a family unit after these kids have gone through something traumatic, like losing both parents at that age they're still under the age of 12. There's a lot of development that has to happen. And if someone's like, well, I am actually your dad, but I do not want to raise you. <laughs> so I will see you on occasion. Like, because here's the thing, it's talking about words. The word father has a lot of implications. And I don't mean in a religious sense, but this is your dad. We, I think we all have expectations of what a dad is, even if we don't experience it or whatever, right? There's just this, this implication of the word. So does he refer to himself as their dad? And then he's like, well, we don't see our dad. We can't live with our dad. We can't stay with our dad. You know, it's a whole big mess. So tech, really it's easier for him just not to be involved at all, at all. And when they get older and have more understanding and decide to seek him out, if I don't know how that works, but you know, I mean, potentially they could have a relationship, but right now it's it's so messy and you know to protecting like lily said protecting the kids and himself and the life that he's built with his partner husband whatever they're, if they're married or whatnot um the easiest thing is really just to stay away and i mean you'd think like her, the the wife the ex-wife that's now passed away her family and the family of her husband if none of those people are going to step up, I mean, you got to wonder, cause I would be assuming those, they would be in those kids' lives already in some capacity. And the fact that they're not going to help step up is very questionable. Like terrible are these kids? Well, there's that other question too. What? <laughs> How terrible Wait, are the kids? What's wrong with these kids? Why does nobody in the family want them? I don't know. And okay, so if no one in either of that married couple, dead married couple's family is going to take these kids, Nobody in the family is, will take them. Does that mean they end up in foster care? Is that in the best interest of the child when, when abuse is so high in foster care, not just from people who run the foster cares, but from other kids in the foster care? There's a high, there's a lot of abuse in foster care. So you would end up in foster Yeah, I, I was I was thinking while you were saying this. Um, isn't it just similar to when, you know, a mother, you know doesn't get an abortion and just went goes through the pregnancy and she says it's to give, give the kid away for adoption or to a foster family and to just be there like half kind of like a half mom because she has issues or you know things like this um and then maybe she, you know and then she would reconnect with her kids when they're older um i mean that's a bit similar right if he just doesn't want to have to do with raising them you know because he just cannot and then later when their adults maybe have a relationship with them does he say is it mentioned in the reddit post whether they can't afford these kids it is mentioned that they can but they don't they can, can. or oh, they have the money they have the money okay know. in that case i'm just gonna can. have to side with their assholes because um regardless of whether he signed his rights away it wasn't the kids who didn't want him in their life. It was that ex-wife who was apparently very, very damaged by his um, coming out, which I completely understand. I can't, I can't imagine how it would feel if, if Ian suddenly told me he was gay and all of a sudden this whole past we've had didn't really exist. You know what I mean? In the way that I thought it did. And 
it would be devastating also to know that he never did love me in the way I thought he did and he never would because I'm a woman. So that would be really painful. Um, this woman, I guess, took it very far and became vengeful and mean and decided to cut off his relationship with his children, which is not the kid's fault. He did inject her with the semen that created the kids. So he is responsible for their existence. Um, <laughs> this is where the visual that you just, okay. Never mind. <laughs> so he he's responsible. Sperm donor, not the dad. That's I what like he the... calls himself? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, no, the injection thing works. It's just choice of words and funny images happening in my head right now. I mean, you have to like the, all of this happened, and and I, I I can only imagine how hard it is to be gay in a maybe in a family or a society or a culture where it's so bad. The reactions would be so bad that you have to pretend to not be gay, mm -hmm. and you have to marry someone. You have to have a beard, and so you're you're lying to this person to save yourself you're you're lying to them you're giving them this whole fake life you are creating two children to preserve your own um sanity happiness whatever just to, to keep yourself safe um so he he made those choices those kids were born the woman got mad when she found out he had been lying to her this whole time and cut him off from his kids not the kids fault not the kids fault they were brought here um those parents die. These kids could end up in foster care because no one in this shit family is going to take them in. So yeah, he's to, to be the ultimate person who rejects these kids um, who are a product of his behavior is, I think, just unacceptable. Okay, so we're three to one right now, apparently. <laughs> Although, I mean, that that is, a, it's hard to argue against that. I'm not yeah. going to argue against that, but Okay. I mean, if, if there were something other than foster care, if there were a relative out there who's, who, you know, who was competing with him for their, for their care, I would, I would be all for a, Hey, give them to the relative who wants them. They probably already know this person. They probably have a relationship and he can do that thing where he's the sometimes dad, you know, but if it's, if it's him or foster care. Uh, and we'll never know what decision they make, I think. So <laughs> well, I'm gonna hunt that guy down. <laughs> but but aren't that isn't those those other family members assholes for not even bother to try, especially if they know the children? It's not their kid. Hmm. They I mean, yeah, sure, but it's not their kid. The grandparents maybe could, you know, you would think they should step in. Um, but it's not their responsibility. I mean, if if we're gonna say that your parents can't demand that you give them grandchildren, then it's also fair to say that grandparents can't be, it's not their responsibility. But he signed away his rights and technically he would just be the sperm donor. So if someone had a, a sperm donor baby and oh, then sure. died, if you're, would if they go if to you those? Can, if you're stepping out of real life, I mean, just because he signed away his rights, I mean, he, he was signing away his rights to, to a couple who was going to raise this kid and you know that's but now they're dead <laughs> so the situation yeah. has changed but if the if the the mother died and she had gone to a sperm donor clinic and said i want this sperm here's and it created that baby and then all of a sudden she died does that then mean that that child has to be the responsibility of the person who don donated that sperm Based no, on that, a sperm that... donor, a sperm donor in a cup, it, the understanding is you are donating this sperm and you're never seeing it again. Yeah. He married this woman. He had sex with this woman. But, he impregnated her twice. And then he told her, oh, by the way, I'm gay. See ya. But then he signed away his rights, though. Like, I just feel that doesn't like... mean any. I think you're, you're really hung up on the paperwork and you're, <laughs> I you're, you're not able to. <laughs> you're not putting the, the fact that these are real lives involved. Signing away your paperwork doesn't make you any less of a parent. And with those responsibilities on a human level. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Um, I know. I know another um, uh, gay man that has had kids, but, but he took care, he raised his kids, but because he, he enjoys it, he's good at it, and he, he is a great dad. So, but I mean, you don't always have that, you know? Um, it's just that he, he wanted to do it. Well, and that's just it, like he was gay. So yeah. I'm like, what if that guy is not going to be much better than a foster family? Not to mean that he would be abusive or anything, but just 
emotionally not there. And so just because he is the biological father of these children and that makes him responsible somehow morally, I suppose, because if legally there's nothing they can do about it. Established. Yeah. Like how does Girl. that, <laughs> how does that make it any like forcing him to have those kids might not be any better than foster foster care again not because he would abuse or anything it's just just it just would not work i'm just imagining being the kid and it's like okay so i guess i'm just gonna bounce around with my with my garbage bag of clothes into all these different foster care environments because my dad who can totally afford me has also abandoned me but they don't need to know that they don't need to know. I'm this, sure they know he exists. I mean, he was in their lives until his ex-wife decided to cut him off. He left when they were, the oldest was three. So the youngest was a newborn. Yep. And so I don't she, mean to be so mad about her. I just think it's really cruel to use your kids as a way to get back at an ex. I, or, I just think that's oh, oh it is. horrifyingly selfish. I mean, and, and also, again, why did they not have paperwork in place to prevent this from happening again this is why you have a will even if you're child free as it's so important because seriously if they had had these discussions just on the off chance that both parents die they would not have this problem so people get a will done i don't care if you don't have kids because i have one and i'm not having kids have a will it's important the, the reason we're Sorry. laughing <laughs> especially during a pandemic we should all have a will <laughs> thank oh, you okay. <laughs> thank Good you point. So literally, the reason that Krista and I are laughing at Lenora is because she's like paperwork, paperwork, paperwork. Like she loves her paperwork, and mm -hmm. everything has to be in writing. It has to be recorded. Yeah. <laughs> How else are we gonna upload this episode? <laughs> my dad. Yeah, I get it from my father. It, but hey, you can't say that I'm wrong. It comes in handy. Yeah. It would have prevented this whole scenario. We would have had to talk about something else on this episode, but you know. I mean, there's, there's no, I don't, I don't think there's a clear winner. I have to say, Kristen, you make some very strong arguments. <laughs> I was wondering if, if it would be possible, if he would consider, um, you know, doing like a uh, split parental uh, guardianship, you know, with somebody mm. in the family there, but if they have the money, he would have a nanny. Yeah, like raise the little kids and they would just not have much to do with them. But it's still a lot if they're at his house every two weeks, you know, it depends how, you know, but uh, I mean, I see them in, a, I see people in the city, you know, a lot of millionaires, they say they have offspring. I mean, it always makes me think about the show Shit's Creek, you know, like how they <laughs> yes. have no relationship with their kids at the beginning because yep. they had the nannies, that they, each of them had a nanny. And I see them in Manhattan, you know, I see the nannies around and I'm like, my God, you know, they have, it's like they have kids just so their millions of dollars go to what they think is, mm -hmm. you know, somebody like the jeans or whatever. <laughs> I, I'm curious about that though. Like, do you think it's kind of, like the, the kids being an accessory in that lifestyle where you live, do you see people of that status presenting their children like a status symbol? It's like, oh, I have kids. I do everything else but see them or raise them, but I have children and that's good enough. Like, do, do you feel it's a status symbol? That's uh, that's an interesting question. Hmm. I, I just get that feeling like, you, you know, talking about, I, I don't know if we're talking at like socialite level, but just wealthy people of a certain status you know it just, and this is not a blanket statement but okay i'm gonna i'm gonna go to um gloria vanderbilt so anderson cooper's mother who's passed away by the way she anderson cooper said somewhere in some interview that his mother wanted to be her surrogate at 85 years old anyway uh yeah i just read that today i was like what because he has a he has a child now Gay man with a child, love Anderson Cooper. But anyway, he, she was, she wrote in her book about how, you know, she had a very young mother. Of course, she comes from a very prominent family and her mother was young, did not know how to be a mom. She was, had a governess, like she had everything given to her, but no parental affection. Her dad died young. It seemed like when I read those stories, it seems like Children are status symbols. This is what you do. You have kids, you ship them off to boarding school. Someone else raises them, but you're still a mom. You're still a dad. You still have the kids. You know, it's just, 
that's what life is like. It, it, to me, it always felt like the poor people were the one that actually raised their own children. Now it's been romanticized where you're middle class and you raise your children. If you're of a certain level of wealth, you have help, you know? Yeah. So it's just that I've always struck it like parenthood, like being a parent involved in your child's life was a poor person thing. I'm not saying yeah. it is, but that's, that's what it that seems like. Very, all that is very books. interesting. Like, come on. Can you, can you argue with me on that? No, like, that makes sense to me. Doesn't it? It's a poor person job. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, I mean, I've, I have see them and it's true. And, it, you know, yeah, maybe for them, you know, they're like, oh, it's easy. And so, you know, they get the help that they need. Me, I see them more as that they're having kids just so they had their inheritance, you know, like their millions of dollars would go somewhere and they think it's better for those to some offspring other instead of you know, whatever they think and that's what i thought but now that you said that that's very interesting that yeah they think uh it's just easier well i'm curious to what people will think about that <laughs> what do you think makes sense i mean it does make sense you know there's that whole legacy thing i mean if it seems like uh, a certain sort of successful person might think well all of this will mean nothing if if it doesn't passed down if my name doesn't carry on there's this you know they have to it's very important to have the name carry on mm -hmm. also kind of like you know the ro the royals mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even though yeah. they keep changing their names it's not their actual names they just keep changing them <laughs> well that is all for today's episode we want to thank lily for joining us lily how can people find you get in touch with you send your song their song lyrics to you no don't do that people please don't do that <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you so much for having me it was such a great chat and very interesting uh stories to uh, discuss so everybody uh the son a child my son child free is um everywhere on all music platform and you can find me here on youtube uh lily rockling l-i-l-i-r-o-q-u-e-l-i-n or you know um instagram twitter my website is lilyrockling.com and uh, come say hello on twitter and instagram and let me know you heard the show and the song and everything else and you can find us at childfreegirls.com and if you want to get in touch with us with us if you would like to get in touch with us and send your comments questions episode suggestions our email is childfreegirls at gmail.com and don't forget to hit subscribe if you're watching this on youtube there's a little button down there and if you're not if you're listening to us on our podcast go to youtube <laughs> search child Free girls and subscribe it helps a lot and if you want to find us on social media, we're all over, most active on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're also on Clubhouse, where we actually host rooms every single day of the week on Toffee Club. You can join now. You don't need an invitation. We're waiting for you on Clubhouse. Just send your request to join, and we will let you in. And we're also on Amazon. Don't Ooh, forget. Sorry, we're also on Amazon. We have a book. It's called Chapter Girls Comfort Food for Thought, right behind Lenora. You can buy it on paperback or Kindle on Amazon. The link's always in our description. Uh, also, one other place you could leave a review that would be helpful is if you're a podcast listener, if you could leave a review on Apple Podcasts, that would be really, really helpful also. Um, and the question for today is kind of a two-parter. The first one is, have you heard Lily's song yet, or even any of your music? You should listen to it all, but specifically for this episode, listen to Child Free. Um, if you haven't, why not? That's my question. Uh, <laughs> if you have listened to it, how much did you like it? That's my other question, but then there's one more. And that is, is this guy the asshole? Leave it in the comments below, wherever you leave your comments, or you can email us if you wanna keep it very private at childfreegirls at gmail.com. And if you are the guy we were talking about, please come on our show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we would love to have a discussion with you. We can keep you we anonymous. Would. We can keep And you we wouldn't be mean, I swear. No, exactly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about everything I said. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs> no, you say bye. <laughs> no, you say bye. <laughs> oh my God, I'm leaving. <laughs> you leave first. I'm going. <laughs> bye. Bye. Ha <laughs> ha